Hello ladies and gentlemen, Spirit of the Law here. Welcome to another Civilization Overview. The Civ in this video is going to be the Huns. Wow, is that seriously their song? That is so creepy. That's like evil clowns in the background and that's going to give me nightmares. <sighs> okay, anyway, so this is the third most popular civilization online. They are consistently considered one of the best civilizations, and I think it's a crime that they're second to the Celts in popularity. These guys rock the open maps, and actually used to be my favorite civilization back in the day on the zone. So I'll probably be ranting a little bit in this video, only because I love the civilization so much. My tactics are also probably outdated by about 8 years. Because of that, I expect that many of you will challenge my every decision. You challenge my every decision. It is as if you seek to lead the Huns yourself. Right, so let's get into it. Let's start with the Huns bonuses in Age of Empires 2 HD. First of all, we'll notice that they are a cavalry civilization. The first bonus, and probably their most famous, is that they don't need houses. Now that's a nice boost through all of the ages, because it saves you both the wood and the work time. And a lot of people forget, but that's actually a really big bonus in death matches as well, because you can put your villagers right away on constructing military buildings instead of houses. Now, depending on how often you get housed, this can be a massive boost to your gameplay. Bear in mind that you do start off with minus 100 wood, but you still save all of that build time. By the time you build 4 houses, you've already gotten paid back for that 100 wood you lost at the start. I do want to address something when it comes to this bonus, and maybe just create some discussion around it. I just want to point out that this bonus isn't actually that insane or game-breaking. The roughly 1,000 wood that this saves you over the course of building houses in a 200 population game isn't that unbalanced compared to other civilization bonuses. If a Britain player, for example, builds 6 town centers, they save about the same amount of wood. As well, if a Japanese player builds 15 lumber camps and 5 mills, they save about 1,000 wood too. The Tudons, on the other hand, with 40 wood farms, can save much more wood over the course of the game. And that's not even mentioning the Celts wood collecting bonus. The reason I point this out is because I see people saying this is a great bonus because of the wood that you save as the Huns, but it's more about the convenience than the total wood that you save. Even if you include the villager time saved not building houses, it doesn't equate to that many resources. There's a bit of a trade-off too, in that the minus 100 wood at the start can be limiting in terms of what your first and second building are you put down, and the no houses also gives you limits in terms of walling and line of sight on the map. There's a convenience factor for sure in not getting housed, but there's also an inconvenience factor in not having houses available to wall. Sometimes I like to wall with houses, and if you can do it in a strategic way, you can make your base harder to raid. At the same time, you also have to base your Dark Age build around having 100 wood less right out of the gate. That means if you put down a lumber camp, you have zero wood left, and you have to be conscious of getting 100 wood before you decide to put down your mill. Japanese, on the other hand, have enough wood to put down a lumber camp and a mill and have 100 wood left over, enough to pay for three houses. It's still a great bonus for the Huns, don't get me wrong, but it's just not far and away the best ever bonus for a civilization. Moving on, in Age of Empires 2 HD, the cavalry archers for the Huns are 25% cheaper in Castle Age and 30% cheaper in Imperial. This is also a very strong bonus. The trebuchets are more accurate. Eh. Uh, that doesn't really come in handy all that often. And their unique tech is... I think this is the developers just taking a dig at atheism. Um, basically, the atheists are just stupid. Seriously, how often does that bonus ever come in handy in online play? The team bonus is that their stables work 20% faster, which is a nice boost in the feudal, castle, and imperial age, actually. Their unique unit is the Tarkin, and even though it's not stated, the Tarkins actually have a slower attack than other cavalry. Combine that with the fact that their stats are also a little bit weaker, and it means that they're not really a go-to cavalry unit, unless you're going to be using their bonus against houses, and you're using them as a raiding unit. Okay, so now let's compare that to the Forgotten Empire's expansion changes. 
The extra technology that they gave the Huns was Marauders, which lets you create the Tarkins at the stable. One thing they don't tell you is that it's way slower to make them at the stable. It takes 24 seconds to make one at the stable versus 14 seconds at a castle. The cavalry archer costs also went up. Now it's only 15% cheaper in castle and 25% in imperial, as opposed to 25 and 30. This is obviously to rebalance the game, as the cavalry archer rush was too strong in Age of Empires 2 HD. They also tweaked the Tarkin a little bit and gave it plus 10 health points and plus 1 attack, as well as took away the treadmill crane and the cannon galleon. To be fair, it didn't make a whole lot of sense why the Huns had the cannon galleon to begin with. Now I'm going to go through how the Huns play in the four different ages and talk about different strategies that you can use and what the viable strategies are as the Huns. So first, in the Dark Age. The idea in the Dark Age is you'll probably want to go up with a few extra villagers and or fishing ships because you want to get to the Castle Age quickly. You want to start taking gold in the Dark Age as well, as this is going to be very important later on. I recommend against the Dark Age rush as they're not the best civilization for it, and the Huns really shine in the higher ages, so the faster that you can advance, the better off you'll be. Some players might go for a Dark Age rush, I'm not saying it's impossible, and they'll cite the fact that you don't need to build the houses as being a reason that the Huns have a good Dark Age rush, I simply don't agree and I think a lot of these bonuses start to pay off later on. Still, you do what you like. If you think you can pull it off and make it worthwhile, by all means, do a Dark Age rush. In the Feudal Age you start to get a few options. Some people like to take advantage of the stables working faster and try to do a scout rush. Other times people try to make archers. If you can swing it though and you don't think you're going to be under any early pressure, head straight for the Castle Age. I find generally if I'm playing against players who are 1700 LO or less, I'm probably not going to get attacked until past the 20 minute mark, or if I am, I probably don't need military to fight it off. One thing I've always found as the Huns in the Feudal Age is I'm often surprised at how many buildings the Huns want to build. So keep lots of lumberjacks around. Don't just say I don't need houses so I'll take off a few lumberjacks. You really do need that extra wood. Try to delay farms as well and put down two archery ranges, a stable, and a blacksmith in the Feudal Age. Especially if you're going to go straight for Castle Age. You're going to need all of those. The highest priorities should actually be wood and gold. Food is not as important to the Huns when you get into the Castle Age. So assuming you get to the castle age at a reasonable time, maybe 18 minutes, 20 minutes, you're going to want to get those archery ranges working on cavalry archers right away. The Huns get the cheaper cavalry archers and this is really going to be the powerhouse in the early castle age. You're going to want to get a couple of knights as well in case they go with skirmishers to counter your cavalry archers. You're going to upgrade the bodkin arrow right away and get bloodlines if you haven't already. I usually do that as I'm advancing the castle. The goal is to attack between 22 minutes and 25 minutes. If you have an attack by 30 minutes, you have to get it in there. You have to attack in the castle age if you're the Huns. This is around the time you're going to start making some more town centers and try to get some stone and some gold. The early castle age is spent sending in your cavalry archers and a few knights as backup. You're going to be raiding, taking out villagers and any feudal age units that they've been dumb enough to make. Cavalry archers are great because they can hit and run, so they end up having high losses and you don't lose anything if you micromanage properly. The reason you're taking stone is so that you can build a forward castle in their base. So you have to keep the pressure on them because Huns aren't very good at defending their own base. If you're fighting in your base, you're in trouble. By the time you go up to Imperial, which will probably be around 45 to 50 minutes because of all the castle age pressure that you're continually giving, you want it to mainly be for the trebuchet, the knight upgrade, and the cavalry archer upgrades in order to break a stalemate that's happened. You win in the Imperial Age, but you set that up by what you did in the castle age. When the resources start to dwindle, the Huns do have the Hussars, Elite Skirmishers, and Halberdiers, but this is not a strength of their civilization. If you're running out of gold as the Huns, then you're running out of time. So for those of you that like strength and weakness comparisons, here they are for the Huns. First, they have a very strong jump into the game because of their Dark Age boost not needing to build houses. In the Castle Age, they also have cheaper cavalry archers and faster stables, which can also be nice for scout rushes. It makes them very flexible in the middle portion of the game. In open maps, they can take advantage of all these things, so that's where they're really going to excel. The choice of Huns dominates in maps like Arabia, where it's going to be very open, it's very difficult to wall. Some major weaknesses for the Huns, first of all, they don't have very good infantry. And that makes them very cavalry dependent, which for some civilizations is fairly easy to counter, especially if they have the camel. 
As I mentioned before, they tend to have poor defenses, and that is added to the fact that they have wide open towns from not having houses. This makes them easy to raid if they're not able to apply pressure to another player. They also lack a lot of siege upgrades and gunpowder units as you get into the Imperial Age. They do have the siege ram which is nice, but they don't even get the onager upgrade. Overall you could describe a lot of this as a lack of flexibility, which makes them predictable. They're very all in with their cavalry. On closed maps this can get exploited. Maps like Black Forest where there can be choke points, anything that's good against cavalry is going to end up overpowering them. Cavalry is also very expensive so they don't have the longevity that other civilizations will have. Not to keep beating up on them, but they also don't have any water bonuses, so they're not really going to excel on water based maps. The general strategy then, if you're playing against the Huns, is to try to raid them back. They really can't take it. For example, if you're the Mongols and you can scout rush faster because of that hunting bonus, then you're going to have a big leg up on the Huns. Also, if you can raid their gold before the Castle Age, then they'll be majorly delayed in getting their units out. The Castle Age units that they're going to use, like the Cavalry Archer and the Knight, are very gold intensive, and their tech tree doesn't have the flexibility to go without gold. As I've said, the Huns used to be my favorite civilization and my go-to civilization, and I was beaten several times by people that got camels out as fast as I got Cavalry Archers out. By the time you attack, you're probably so invested in Cavalry that it's hard for you to suddenly switch to the Archer line to deal with camels. So now if you're playing as the Huns, I have lots of recommendations for you. First of all, and most importantly though, you're going to want to read the situation. Everything I tell you gets superseded by your instincts in the game. In my experience though, you rarely go wrong with a cavalry archer rush followed by knights. This involves a fast castle, rarely going with a dark age or feudal rush, or maybe just a few archers in feudal, your points get up as quickly as possible. I used to have the mindset of attack at 25 minutes. Unless I'm ready to go. If I have the cavalry archers out, I have 8 or 10 of them. At 22 minutes, I'm not going to wait till 25. I'm just going to send them. But I had the mindset of try to be ready to attack by 25 minutes. If I'm being delayed for whatever reason, I had a failed boar lure and my map isn't the best, and I can't get a 25 minute attack out, my mindset was I have to attack by 30 minutes. You don't want to be attacking later than that. And I have to go imperial by 50. This means at least 20 minutes of sustained castle age pressure. Another tip is that the critical mass is important for both cavalry archers and for knights. Don't send four cavalry archers on their own. You need at least eight to have a strong group. You have to be able to one-shot units as they're coming up to you as you hit and run, or else it gets to be too much micromanagement. If you're behind in score and getting ready to do your rush with your cavalry archers, you're going to want at least 12, because bear in mind they have a higher score, they probably have something ready for your attack. As well, I usually drop my first castle inside their town rather than in my own. Normally the first castle is good for defense in your own town, but as the Huns you're going to really want to be putting that pressure on them, so dropping the castle in their town makes the threat to them that much more immediate. I also recommend against using the Tarkin in general. Cavalry archers and knights are much better against units than cavalry archers and Tarkins. Even when you take the raiding involved, you're probably not going to use Tarkins until maybe the Imperial Age, if at all. Raiding with the cavalry archers is key and taking out the villagers once you have their units disposed of. This is going to keep them on the back foot and it lets you keep pressure on them and keep your town safe. The best defense really is a good offense. I think that's going to just about do it for this video. So no, this probably isn't what a lot of you expected. Normally I do. How's the civilization encountering all the different types? How do they counter archers? How do they counter infantry? I feel like that's not the best way to look at the Huns though, because the Huns aren't about trying to counter what the opponent's doing. The Huns are all about getting the pressure on. And the real strength of the Huns is in that castle age attack with the cavalry archers and the knights. The Huns are really the best at that strategy, so in order to evaluate them, you just want to look at that particular playstyle. It's extremely effective attacking with cavalry archers around that 25 minute mark. I've won lots of games that way and it's very popular online. What it really comes down to with the Huns is how good are you at executing that plan, with archers in the feudal age and then cavalry archers and knights in the castle age, follow up with siege and then end it in the imperial age with trebuchets and paladins. If you're really good at executing that, then the Huns are a really good civilization for you. And if you're not great at executing that, then they're really not going to be a great civilization in your hands. So that's my view on the Huns. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Maybe it made you think. Leave a comment if you have any other ideas about the Huns, anything you disagree with, anything that really made you think. And I'm going to get some comments about the houses. That's okay. Bring it on.
If you have another civilization that you want me to cover, leave a comment in the comment section. I try to have one out every couple of weeks. Thanks everybody for watching, I'm Spirit of the Law, and we'll see you next time.